Hey guys, welcome back to another Earthen Rangers video. Today's going to be a special video where I'm going to be showing you how to turn the California Buckeye Nut into California Buckeye Nut Fish Stun Powder. And this is one of the properties of the California Buckeye Nut Tree. If you're interested in looking up the identification properties um, or the edible and survival uses of the California Buckeye Nut uh, Buckeye Tree, um, check out my first California Buckeye video, which is called the uh, Magical California Buckeye Nut Tree. Check that video out, and uh, it'll give you all those identification properties in addition to the other properties of this tree. But what we're going to be doing through this video is showing you guys the four easy steps in order to make your own fish stun powder. Now I do uh, mention a quick disclaimer about this. Once you make your own California Buckeye Nut fish stun powder, you do not want to be utilizing this in any area. Um, if a law enforcement agent or a park ranger catches you utilizing this in a stream, river, reservoir, lake, pond, you might get in deep trouble. So this is something that I recommend hanging on to for those survival scenarios. In addition, if you're really itching to test it out, you can do something like buy a few feeder goldfish at the pet store and try it out on those little guys. So let's get into it. So we're going to be harvesting some buckeye nuts to uh, grind up into our natural fish stun powder. So we are approaching a buckeye tree here. And something uh, that's new and experimental for me is that every time I've made buckeye nut powder, I've made it in the dead of winter, and I've done so once the buckeye nuts were ripe and had fallen on the ground, and then I harvested them from the ground. This time, uh, it being um, beginning of September, I'm obviously harvesting these buckeye nuts earlier. Typically, these buckeye nuts don't fall uh, from the tree and onto the ground until November and December. Um, however, uh, the plant cycles are a little early this year. I believe that's just due to the intense amount of rain that we had in the past winter, um, followed five years of droughts. Uh, this is the first time I'm actively harvesting the buckeye nut from the tree. I'm going to put this in my bag right here. And as you can see, this buckeye nut tree is under a large canopy of western sycamores. So this buckeye tree is not getting exposed to an excessive amount of light. Thus, there is not a lot of buckeye nuts on this tree. So I'm actually just going to take one buckeye nut from this tree and I'm going to keep uh, traveling here. Because we had five years of drought, followed by uh, an intense rain year, the uh, acorns are masting this year, which means there's a lot of acorns being produced. The squirrels, the native squirrels in the area aren't going to need to rely on the buckeye nuts as much, so if you're thinking about harvesting buckeye nuts to make a fish stud powder, this is the year to do it, because there's a lot of acorns to go around, so the native wildlife is going to have lots of acorns to eat, and they're not going to have to rely on uh, small amounts of buckeye nuts to help them through the winter. As you see here, this buckeye nut tree um, doesn't have very many nuts. I'm seeing three here. I'm going to take this guy, leave those two. Before you go out and harvest buckeye nuts, you need to make sure you're doing so in a place that you've either been approved to or private property or something like that. Um, you don't want to go and harvest these in a preserve or state park unless you have permission. Another thing you can do is when you're harvesting these buckeye nuts is remove some of the invasive plants around the buckeye tree. Um, if there's some invasive Avena fatua, which is the California super common invasive wild oat grass, remove some of those from around the buckeye. If you have a cluster of buckeyes and the branches from different buckeye trees are growing into each other and growing all gnarled. You can do a little bit of uh, thinning in those areas and um, this will further help out. Again though, if you're doing this at a park or a preserve, you need to get permission. A great strategy 
is to do some volunteer work at parks or preserves, build up a relationship with the naturalists and biologists that work there, and then um, tell them you want to do some restoration work, maybe remove some invasives, and you'd also like to caretake some native species to work with. Here you see, for example, a buckeye tree that is uh, partially under the canopy of smaller western sycamores and smaller uh, black cottonwoods. However, it is open to a lot of, and exposed to a lot of sunlight as there's holes in the canopy over here. So this buckeye tree has a lot of buckeye nuts. Um, as you guys saw earlier, I got two from another little buckeye grove that I was at. Um, and I'm gonna be able to get the rest here. I'm gonna take one from that cluster. I'm gonna take a smaller one of the three from that cluster. And I'm gonna be making a very small batch of buckeye nut fish stone powder this time, simply because I do not know if the concentration of the chemical compound that is in these nuts is at its strongest when it's still on the tree, or if it's at its strongest once it's completely ripened and falls to the ground. Again, I've only harvested buckeye nuts once they fall into the ground later in the season. So I don't want to harvest a ton of them and make a huge batch just in case that chemical compound isn't as dominant in this, in this stage of the buckeye nut because I wouldn't want to waste it. I really think like six or seven is going to be plenty for this, li this little experimental batch. All right guys, so this is step two of the buckeye nut fish done powder process. I was able to harvest seven. So step two is peeling the buckeye nuts. It is a two-step process. First process is taking a knife and peeling out that from the skin. Now what's really interesting that I'm just noticing is once these buckeye nuts fully mature and fall from the tree, you peel off the outer husk and there's a thicker brown calcified cambium on the outside of the nut, uh, possibly because these nuts haven't fully ripened, there is no outer cambium to these nuts. So that's kind of cool just because the outer cambium is a pain in the butt to take off. As you can see, this was easy to take off. The outer cambium is not easy to take off. And this is just the whole nut itself. In fact, let's check it out. I think that cambium is still there. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. So because the nut has not uh, aged completely, the outer cambium is white and the nut is green, um, or has a greenish color to it. Again, this is the first time I've harvested from the tree. In the past, I've always let the uh, nuts fall from the tree before I've harvested. So this is really cool. This is going to be a lot easier to take off. Once this part calcifies and turns brown, um, you have to cut it off with a knife and it's like peeling wood off of a hard fruit. It's very difficult. Also, the nut itself right now is greenish in color. Typically, it's whitish in color once you're letting it ripen all the way. These nuts do have a toxic chemical compound to them, so when you're working with this stuff, you don't want to wipe your eyes, you don't want to eat food while you're doing it, you want to wash your hands thoroughly after. Also, when you're in the powdering stage, uh, I recommend doing it outdoors because you don't want to be breathing in any of that powdered uh, nut, which could cause uh, possible issues. So again, taking that off, wow, during the early stages, this just, this stuff comes off like butter. It is so convenient. I'm really hopeful that the, uh, that it's just as, a, as of effective as a fish stun because this is so much easier to work with uh, compared to when the plant ages. So this is a great example of a nut that started to mature 
um, and that outer cambium is calcifying and turning brown. So this is kind of cool because this is in that transitional stage of what I was talking about. So this one might be a little harder to take off. You can see how this wider cambium part is really soft, yet this browner stuff is already calcified and a lot harder to take off. I might have to use my knife for that part. So this is how you'd normally have to do it. Um, and again, this even comes off a lot easier than when it's completely mature and calcified. All right, so now we're left with all these little chunks. And you're gonna take, if you have it, a mortar and pestle. It's not necessary though, it just makes the job a little easier. I'm gonna throw some in there. If you don't have this, you could find a flat rock and just get another rock as a mallet and mash it up. There's a lot of variables to this. Crush it up, and they'll go flying everywhere. Put some more in there. All right, so that'll do. I'm hoping uh, within one solid day of being in the sun. Guys will dry out nicely. All right, guys. So we are at the fourth step to making Buckeye fish stone powder. As you can see, most of the Buckeye nuts have dried out pretty well. Most of these pieces, some of the thicker pieces, are still not completely dry. We'll grind up these larger pieces after they dry out for a couple more days. doesn't grind up after this. So now we're just going to start the grinding process. This definitely takes quite a while. Right, so I've been grinding away at these seven Buckeye nuts for two days now. This has been probably about two solid hours of grinding. My hands are so sore and tired from doing this. <laughs> All right, so here's the moment of truth. We're gonna test out the Buckeye Nut Powder Fish Stun on a feeder goldfish. These are the feeder fish that we utilize to feed uh, Mr. Bass, Arias' pet bass. Um, I have a cup of fresh water here, so once he's stunned, we'll revive him in the cup of fresh water. And here we go. So it took quite a bit of powder to get him stunned, but he is stunned. Let's try to get him to fresh water now. Let's see if we can revive this poor little guy. 